And we start right now with IT Me and a bombshell allegation from the Delphi murders case. We've got to get to right to Danielle Zakowski, IT Mates, Danielle Zakowski. The defense says prosecutors are withholding evidence. What's that about, Danielle? Yes, well, this motion to compel was the first of seven filings. Richard Allen's attorneys entered into court today, but the most important when it comes to his criminal case, this filing alleges the state withheld key pieces of evidence during the discovery process that would help to better build their case that Allen is not the killer. It also calls for sanctions against the prosecution if the state did indeed break the rules of discovery, and this causes a delay in the trial. The motion to compel asks for evidence, including geomapping of all of the cell phones in the area of the Monon High Bridge at the time of the murders. The defense says none of those phones were linked to Allen. They also asked for video and audio of police interviews and information from an interview with an expert in ritualistic sacrifices. What's interesting is there are some points in there where they admit that some of the evidence they're asking for may not even exist. They're just guessing that it's likely to exist in their opinion. This filing comes less than a week after the defense filed a request for a speedy trial. Under Indiana law, the trial must start in 70 days, and this gives a mid-May deadline and an official trial date of May 13th. This motion to compel could delay the trial. The defense is specifically asking for sanctions um, of the prosecutor in the form of if this gets continued, it'd be blamed on the prosecutor. So, I mean, if they're even thinking about that, that really seems to strongly indicate to me that there probably be more delays um, and we should not necessarily expect May. While unlikely, according to Greenlee, who is an attorney, if the 70 day clock runs out because the prosecution broke rules, Allen would be released from jail. If Allen is not tried in court, he could still be recharged with these crimes and tried in court at a later date. The defense also filed a motion to move the proceedings back to Carroll County, where the crime took place. It's important to note there are two legal matters playing out in the courts at the same time, the criminal trial against Allen and the contempt hearing for his lawyers. All of the additional filings relate to the contempt hearing. The most important asked the court to postpone the hearing altogether in order to get this case to trial. Experts say that hearing should not be able to remove the attorneys from this case after the Indiana Supreme Court got involved last Last year. So the criminal trial could move forward first. Danielle Zolkowski, Wish TV, IT Mate. All right, thanks, Danielle. We're staying with IT Mate. The additional filings in the contempt hearing add more witnesses. Ask the prosecutor to recuse himself because he is a witness in the hearing and ask the judge to recuse herself due to a lack of neutrality. Those motions were filed at the same time as one to postpone this hearing altogether and focus first on the criminal trial. But as of now, the contempt of court hearing is still set to move forward. IT Mate has obtained new documents relating to that hearing. They give us an insight into what could unfold on Monday. IT Mate anchor Dakari Turner explains. Monday's hearing is set to deal with contempt of court accusations against Richard Allen's attorneys, Brad Rossi and Andrew Baldwin. Prosecutors want the judge to take some type of disciplinary action against the defense team over a leak of evidence in the Delphi murders last year. That leak, tied back to the defense team's legal office, included never-before-released photos of the scene where Abby Williams and Libby German died. Judge Francis Gohl has already called the attorneys grossly negligent for the leak, pushing them off the case in October of last year. We've had an unexpected turn of events, ladies and gentlemen. The defense attorneys have withdrawn their representation of Mr. Allen. Allen's attorneys have filed notice. They plan to introduce evidence Monday that prosecutors had been in contact with online true crime podcasters and YouTube creators. One of them, Gary Bodette, who runs the YouTube page FigSolve, which has spent extensive time covering the Delphi case. I've gone from learning about the Delphi murders while listening to a podcast called True Crime Garage to creating YouTube videos to spread awareness about the case and to encourage people to tip in relevant information to law enforcement, hoping that a little nudge would make someone who knew something say something. The defense team points to an October 22nd, 2022 video from the page that talks about a bullet found at the crime scene and linked to Allen when that information was still under seal and a week before it was unsealed. Allen's attorneys also plan to present evidence of body communications about the disqualification of defense counsel, giving prosecutors defense work product and court staff revelations. 
In a letter to the court obtained by I-Team 8 Tuesday, Baudet defends his work, saying he did contact prosecutors when he received unsolicited Delphi evidence. He goes on to write, I must unequivocally state that I was not involved in any strategy to disseminate crime scene photos. He goes on to claim his online interactions have been misrepresented by individuals who have targeted me due to my support for the Indiana prosecutor, law enforcement, and the Honorable Judge Gold. I'm Dakari Turner for Wish TV, wishtv.com, or follow us on Facebook for updates.